everyone and welcome back to Paula's Kitchen. We are in season two and this is episode 10. I have a special one today. The weekend that we are filming this, it is going to be Burns Night on January 25th, a very important celebration for Scots around the world. And if you're not familiar with Burns Night, it is the celebration of poet Robert Burns's birthday. He's the National Poet of Scotland, uh, famous for Auld Lang Syne and so many other wonderful poems that are part of our lives. And Burns Night is a very big celebration. So I thought that we would honor that with a couple of treats. I want to make some scones, specifically cranberry orange. These are favorites. I've made these before. Um, I'm going to make a fruit compote to serve with them, which I've never made before. It's blueberries and cherries. Excited to try that. And then I'm also going to make, for the very first time ever, shortbread from scratch. Never made shortbread, usually by walkers. So this is a little bit of an adventure for me. I'm excited to do this. Before we go on, though, let me just stop and say I'd like to dedicate today's episode to... Dale's mom, Betty McKenzie, we just lost her this week to our everlasting sorrow. And she was wonderful mother-in-law to me, wonderful mother to Dale, and the greatest cook. She would make holiday spreads for 30 people with three meats and four desserts. And she was a great inspiration to me throughout my marriage. So, Betty, mom, this one's for you. Let's talk ingredients. For the scones, we're going to do those first. The dry ingredients are going to be flour, sugar, salt, baking powder. And then we're going to use for flavoring some dried cranberries, orange zest. And then we're going to use butter, eggs, milk. And we're going to glaze those with an egg wash and some turbinado sugar. This is a product I've never used before, so I actually had to go buy it. Then we are going to make the shortbread, and that, you may know, has three ingredients. Flour, sugar, butter, and that's it. Um, and then later on, we'll pull out our ingredients for that compote I spoke of. So, stick with me. Let's bake a couple things for Bird's Night. All right, folks, before I get started, I want to give credit to where I got this recipe. It is a beautiful magazine I got four or five years ago called Tea Time Holidays. And you know what a tea drinker I am. This is full of scone and cookie and little uh, petty fours and canopies and stuff that go with tea. So I first made these cranberry orange scones on Christmas morning. Loved them so much, so I want to make them for you. So, dry ingredients, what I've done so far is I've put two cups of flour in my bowl, a half a cup of sugar, a whole tablespoon of baking powder, that's quite a bit, and a quarter teaspoon of salt. So let me whisk those dries together real quickly. And then we're going to stir in our two flavorings, which are handy right here. It's going to be a half a cup of the dried cranberries. And then off camera, I also did a one tablespoon of fresh orange zest, which is pretty much the zest of an orange. So get all that in there. And I will just whisk this together again. Smells amazing. Nothing like fresh orange zest. Okay, that is ready. Now, next, according to my recipe, let me just double check. I have to cut in a whole stick, eight ounces of cold butter. So we're gonna do that just like we would shortening for a pie crust. Um, so you cut that in. I cut that in with two knives. That's just my personal preference. Um, If you have a pastry blender, feel free to use it. Um, but yeah, I'm just going to cut this in and till I get the crumble effect of the size of about peas. So let me get busy on that and you don't need to watch me. I'll come back after I've done it. 
Hello, I'm back. I'm just about done with cutting the butter into the flour mixture and the instructions that says coarse crumbs, but I always sort of do, if they're the size of peas, they're about right. Meanwhile, I did turn my oven on 425 degrees and I grabbed a cookie sheet, put some parchment paper on it because that's how we're going to bake the scones when they're ready. Let me set this aside. Next step, I need to grab one of these eggs and crack it into a little bowl. And I just need to beat it for a moment here. I'll lift that up so it doesn't rattle. <laughs> And then I'm going to stir in six tablespoons of milk. And these are the only liquids that are going into my dough. So here's my six tablespoons of milk I already measured out. Just stir those together for a moment. All right, that is ready. Grab my dries back again and grab my favorite spurtle and I'm ready. Let's do it. So it says here, add to flour mixture, stirring till mixture is evenly moist. So let's do this. And here we go. So as you can see in the overhead camera, this is starting to absorb the liquids and I'm going to be ready to turn it out soon and finish it up by hand. And since this is a nice smooth surface right here, I think I will turn it out right here so that you can see what's going on on the overhead camera. So give me a sec and we're going to do that next. I floured my board here and I'm going to put my dough out onto it and finish it by hand. So the instructions tell me to form it into a ball with my hands and then we're going to just knead it gently six to eight times once I have it formed. So that looks about right. Let's go with one two, three, and four, five, let's turn it over a little bit, five, six, seven. All right. Now, I need a lot more flour, that's for sure. Luckily, I have a bunch here. And I'm going to grab a rolling pin and we're going to roll this out. It tells me to roll it about three quarters of an inch in thickness. So let me do that. Let me make sure that it's well floured. And we're going to roll this out in a moment. But guess what? I have yucky hands. Let me rinse them off and then we'll be rolling this out. Got my favorite old wooden rolling pin. Let me just dust it with a little bit of flour and we will begin our rolling process here. Oops. Obviously I'm going to need to do this often as I go along because it is a sticky dough. It calls for a two and a half inch biscuit round, which I used to have one. It was yellow. I remember it distinctly. Can't find it. So folks, those of you that have ever made biscuits before, what do you use in a pinch? A glass. <laughs> it works. All right, let me get this rolled out. Wow, I have to say, this just looks wonderful already. Now, let me just take a peek and see if it looks at roughly three quarters of an inch in thickness. It might even be a little thinner than that, but that's okay. All righty, let me dip these, this edge of this in some flour, and we are simply going to make some rounds and then whatever's left I'll re-roll so that we don't waste one bit of this wonderful cranberry orange dough. Hey 
folks, I want to tell you too that uh, two years ago in 2019, we actually went to a Burns Night Supper here in Las Vegas, the St. Andrews Society. Um, is all over the world and it is very active in preserving Scottish traditions. So we did go to a Burns Night Supper and we have I think a couple of video clips off of our phone that we might be able to insert and show you. We really had a fun night. That's a, that's a cookie sheet full of goodness. Let me set up for the egg wash and the sugar. Be right back. Here we are, I uh, have my egg wash here. Again, I just beat it with a, a fork for a, a minute or so. And I have just a little brush that actually is for sweet corn, but it actually works great for this as well. So I'm just going to brush the tops of these with the egg wash and then sprinkle with this sugar. These already just remind me of our Christmas mornings. But it's still winter here, it's January, so I think they'll be terrific for our Burns celebration. All right, take a look in this camera, folks, at this sugar. This is a, a unique experience for me, this turbinado sugar. Um, kind of excited about it. And I'm just using my fingers to pinch it on top of the egg wash. And these are going to go in the oven. Hmm. Looks good. I feel like I want to make a pot of tea, except guess what? I have more work to do. <laughs> Let me clean up. We'll be back for the next step. 10 minutes, ladies and gentlemen. Look at these golden brown beauties. They look fab. All right, everybody, let's make shortbread. I grabbed my old trusty Betty Crocker and right above my favorite sugar cookies is traditional Scotch shortbread. We're gonna start with three quarter cup of very soft butter. So that's a stick and a half. And then I'm going to add in one quarter cup of sugar and I'm going to just cream those together with my spatula. That should be pretty easy because like I said I've had the butter out for several hours. It's very very soft and then the only other ingredient, believe it or not, is going to be two cups of just regular all-purpose flour that I'm going to work in with my spatula and then we're going to roll these out. So let me add in a little bit of this two cups of flour and get this going. I have to say I'm very excited about this. If I thought that it was this easy to make my own shortbread, I think I would have done it a long time ago. <laughs> All right, folks, let me get this totally incorporated and then let me get my rolling pin and floured board set up because again, we're gonna be rolling things out We'll be cutting some cookies. Here we are. It tells me in my Betty Crocker that I need to have a cloth covered board and I need to flour it lightly. So let me follow the instructions to the letter. Just gently spread the flour. I can't say I've ever done this. Cameraman Dale was over here. He said, doesn't seem like it'll roll on cloth, but you know what? I trust old Betty Crocker. Let me put my crumbly dough out onto my cloth covered board and we'll just kind of mush it together here. Boy, <laughs> there's not much to this and yet I can absolutely tell that it's shortbread. This is interesting. I don't know how this is going to work out. We'll see. Let me grab my rolling pin, put some flour on it and let's start rolling. And I'm thinking I might about have it. So let's see how that goes. Uh, do a little more rolls here on this side. But 
but I might just have it. All right, so here's the first of my uh, card suits. I'll just dip that a little bit, and let's make a heart cookie. Hmm. Oh, check that out, you guys. <laughs> I have a cookie sheet handy right here. Let me drop that on there. Oh, boy. Okay. It looks like a shortbread cookie. I'm kind of excited. All right, folks, let me finish up my the rest of my dough, get my cookie sheet ready, and I will be back with you when we're ready to pop these babies in the oven. I have to say, I'm quite pleased with these <laughs> for never having done it before, and my cameraman came over and he gave me the thumbs up too. So in the oven they go 350 degrees for 20 minutes. And they do not expand very much. Actually, I could have put them closer together. It says they could have been a half inch apart. So I'm gonna let those bake for 20 minutes. And meanwhile, I'm gonna set up to make that little berry compote we talked about to serve with our scones and our cookies. All right, folks, the third thing that we're gonna do today is called a blueberry cherry compote. It's again out of my tea cookbook and it's meant to be an accompaniment to the scones. As you all know, you can also use cream or lemon curd, but I love the idea of the berries. I just thought because it's winter, I thought it'd be a really nice accompaniment. So I need one and a quarter cup of blueberries and because it's winter, I'm using frozen. If you have fresh, that would be fine but I don't <laughs> right now. And then I also need a cup of frozen cherries and I actually cut these in quarters just to kind of help the compote move along. Oh, I have to say those look great. Then I also need a quarter cup of sugar and a quarter cup of fresh orange juice. I actually just zested one orange, I'm sorry, not zested, I juiced one orange just now, fresh. So that's my quarter cup of orange juice. All right, those four ingredients, I'm going to turn the fire on and I'm going to get those going. Wow, I didn't have to wait too long for that. <laughs> it says bring to a boil, reduce heat and simmer for 15 minutes. Well, folks, I don't think that took five minutes, but look in the overhead camera, how this has already reduced and created all of this incredible juice that is flavored with the sugar and the orange juice. I'm really excited for this. So I, it is beginning to boil. It needs to cook and reduce without a lid for 15 minutes. And then we're just gonna uh, thicken it the slightest bit with a little bit of cornstarch. Alrighty, no sooner had I stopped that other segment, the timer went off, so let's grab these shortbread cookies. I have to confess, Dale and I did take a peek and a smell. They're just the teeniest, lightest, slightest little bit brown. Let me show you that in the overhead camera. They smell like shortbread. So let me set these down. And if my hand cameraman would follow me over here, I'm just going to take them off and put them on a rack to cool. Oh, you guys! <gasps> Walkers might have lost a customer because I can make these myself. <laughs> They're beautiful. I can't wait to put a dollop of this berry compote on top of one and have it. Oh my goodness, done with those. I'm thrilled. Let me keep an eye on this compote and we'll be back to thicken it in, oh, 10 minutes or so. Time is up with my uh, gentle boil of my fruits and I am really really excited about how this has turned out. So just a moment ago I took a half a teaspoon of cornstarch and one tablespoon of water, dissolved the cornstarch and I'm going to then pour that into my fruit to just thicken it up so that it's not quite a jelly or jam but thicker than fruit juice anyway. Now I have to stir this continuously for eh, two or three minutes and the compote is done. Now I can serve this warm with the cookies and the scones or cold, either one, totally your choice. 
So you can see this is already thickening up. I'm just going to stir and cook and then I'm going to take it off a of fire and the next time you see us, we are going to be sampling our goodies. Stay tuned for that. Good evening everybody. Welcome to the kitchen table. It is now the fun part of the evening, which is the tasting and sampling. Yes, we're gonna taste everything that Paula made, and we're also gonna have a toast to Burns Night, which uh, was, well, two days prior to you seeing this. And also, my cousin, Angus Dale, from the Highlands of Nevada, up there by Virginia City, stopped in to have uh, a little bit of uh, uh, Burns Night uh, joy with us. I'll just, we, I'll, yeah. We yeah. love Angus. Yeah, I'll just put a little clip. He, he doesn't say too much. I'll just put a little clip of him here and you can take a look at him. Good looking guy though, isn't he? I'll tell you what. A great taste in clothing. The man it, looks like a million dollars. He does. He looks... Man, a few words though. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, he couldn't talk. He's one of those uh, Tabor tossers, right? Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. All right, let's give this a try here. So what we have are cranberry orange scones, and we also have our shortbread, and we have our blueberry cherry compote. Can we show this to them? We sure can. What it looks like. Maybe I'll get a picture of that and insert it. Oh, we definitely should because yeah. it is really, I had a taste off camera. It is so delicious. Perfect choice for a winter night. I think, what I'm, well, you go ahead first. It doesn't matter, honey, who goes first, but I'm going to take a little crumble and I'm going to put a little bit of a berry on top. You do the scone and I'll do the... Cookie? Cookie. Mm, it's going to make a mess. All right. Mm. How is that? Wow, that's so, so good. Wow. Superb. Honest to goodness. Oh. Isn't that great? Wow. It takes the cookie and the scone to a whole nother level. So it's cooled a little bit. It's been a couple hours since I made it. I just left it out. It is delicious cold or warm. I could see us putting it in the microwave and warming it up and it would be it, really it's great It's really, as well. really good. Yeah. It's just pops with flavor. And honestly. <laughs> are they great? They're unbelievable. They're this, great. This is as good as Walker's. It's absolutely yeah. delicious and so simple. Honestly, if I hadn't had a camera on, I could have whipped those out in no time. And There's I, nothing to them. I had a scone earlier, so I can attest that they are just absolute delicious. Yes. So absolutely. it is, this is the Burns uh, Night uh, Sweets, we call this. And uh, what better way to, to uh, celebrate Burns Night than to have a little drama? And uh, so, would tell me what this the name of this so, is. So I looked this up. I had actually said it incorrectly in our uh, unboxing video. It's called Glen Geary, and it is the east most easterly Scotch distillery, not only in Scotland but in the world. It's in the northeast corner of Scotland in Aberdeenshire, in a little tiny market town called Old Meldrum. I love the sound of that. And uh, Ian and Deborah live there, right in actually viewing distance of the distillery, and they sent us two drams. So this particular so this one, was for, for New Year's Eve, right? Right. Yeah. yeah, it was for Hogmanay, but we're going to have it for Burns Night instead. So this is the single malt 12-year-old, and you have... I have the single malt... Uh, Founders Reserve. Founders Reserve, yeah. So we're going to sample yeah. our Glen Geary... It is arguably the oldest distillery in Scotland, uh, 1797. Oh boy, that smells great. Just take a little taste. Oh. A little whiff. Oh. To Rabbi Burns oh. and Scots the world over. That is some good whiskey. So is this. That wow. is some oh, good whiskey. Oh, it's very rich and full-bodied. Mmm. Very, very good. Wow, that is incredibly delicious. I was reading on their website that if you make it here and try this, you never go back. And I can see why. It's extraordinarily very good. delicious. Thank you guys for sending this to us. And oh, uh, we hope you, you enjoyed our uh, Robert Burns uh, Night Sweets. And uh, give it a try. I'm telling you what. This shortbread is 
really something I bowled else. Dale over a little yeah. bit with those cookies. <laughs> yeah, they really are great. And scones, I, I've been, you call them sco- scones. Is scones is they is say in, they say in Scotland and the yeah. north part of England, yes. Well, if I have a bad throat, so I say scones. <laughs> but the fact that you can get anything out at all is a true. good thing. <laughs> but uh, again, give these a try. Uh, and also, we are uh, trying to put out contact content for you guys. We're we're working real hard. Uh, we're going to keep on trying, right? We sure are, Every as week. best we can. Best With we can. the 25% open and all that stuff, we'll do our best. And uh, it's uh, I was going to actually read read a poem from Robert Burns today. Years back, our son gave us this book. It's called Love Songs of Scotland. It was published in 1901, and it has many, many Rebbe Burns it's almost as old selections as in it. And Dale was going to read from it, but he's got no voice. No. I, 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 Some I, other time. Yeah, because I, I <laughs> really want to do it justice. Absolutely. Uh, do it. All right. If you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Don't forget to hit that notification button. Paula, what else do you have to say to these nice folks? That's all we have. Thanks for being with us for our Burns Night Sweet Treats. And, uh, yeah, give them a try. Have a good one, everybody. Hope you had a good time. See you next time.